up from the ground. We feel it now. Bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river, yeah, we come alive in the river. All right, come on. I need more energy than this. Are you ready to be refreshed in the river of God this morning? Come on, family. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain. That drowns sorrow, there is an ocean deeper than fear. The tide is rising, it's deeper than fear this morning. There is a current stirring deep inside, it's overflowing from the heart of God. The blood of heaven crashing over us, the tide is rising, rising. Yeah, bursting, bursting. Now, bursting, bursting off from the ground. We feel it now. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. Yeah, we come alive. We come alive. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river, oh, we come alive in the river. Oh, Jesus, you can break off every chain this morning, God. Break open prison doors, set all the captives free. Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well in me. Nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing in the street. Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well in me. Sing it again. Break open prison doors. Set all the captives free. Bring up a well, bring up a well, bring up a well in me. Nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing in the street. Bring up a well, bring up a well, bring up a well in me. Yeah. We come alive. We come alive in the river, yeah, we come alive in the river. 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 Oh, we come alive in the river. All right, spring up. Spring up away. Bring up a well, bring up a well, bring up a well in me. 
just shall live by faith. That we need, our normal needs to continue just as it's always been. That we have our faith and our confidence in the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, in spite of what happens in the world. You see how quickly things have changed in the last few months. And it's going to, there's other things going to be coming. Once this is over, there'll be the next obstacle, the next challenge. But if we have our faith and our confidence in Christ, we're going to make it through. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to, to uh, support your kingdom. God, pray, pray to bless each one. God, we pray for those that are home at home, watching it on television right now. God, that you bless them. And God, we just thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, you guys get quiet giving this off. You know, used to be we had music playing. Remember that for what? You had music playing, everybody, you know? God bless the cheerful giver, but don't we'll take it from anybody, amen? Don't we'll take it from the uncheerful giver, too. So, praise God. Pastor Rich is going to come in and minister. Hey, Dave. See this button right here? Push that one, everybody. When I call the worship team up. Push that button. Hmm? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, guys. 
good to be in church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We wanted to break you in slow. We know a lot of you are out of shape because you, you haven't worked for the corporate worship service for over two months. So we figured if we can get you the whole 35, 40 minutes of vibrant worship, we may have to like lay hands on you to bring you back. You know, saying, so, brother, bring him back. You know, the paramedic comes. I don't know. He was dancing and singing. Next thing we know, he fell over on the floor. And the last thing I heard him say is, don't raise me from the dead. I'm going to glory. You know, so I actually had somebody told me that. You know, I had Sister Millie. Some of you know Sister Millie. She lived in the apartment over here and was involved in helping the church grow for years. And when in soul, she was a real evangelist. And she would, she had a Holy Ghost grip. If she, if you would shake her hand, you weren't getting away. And she told until she told you the whole plan of salvation, starting in Genesis, going all the way to Revelations. You know, so it was either the only way you could get away is to fall on your knees and repent, and then she then she she pray for you and let you go. You know, so uh, she was in the apartment. I was in my office one day, and she came out and she fell and went down a couple steps right there by the by the entrance and was laying there. And one of the daycare workers came over, all upset, and I ran over. And she's laying on a, she's laying across the steps like this where she where she fell. And she goes, she says, Brother Rich, give him the gospel at my funeral. I'm going to glory. She says, I'm going to glory. And, I, and she had broken her shoulder. I think it was her shoulder. Or just dislocated her shoulder, you know. So paramedics, paramedics came and that's when Al Couple Hospital is still here and, and got her on. I prayed for her and um, got her back in the gurney, got her in the gurney, took her over. Fixed it up like four or five hours later, she's back. And uh, I hear she's back, you know, so I go up there and she's, she's laying in bed with her feet propped up. I says, what do you think, sister? She goes, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. She was so disappointed. She's not for sure she was going to, going to be going to glory, you know. And uh, she told me in multiple occasions, if I get sick, so I'm, I'm trusting the Lord's going to just take me out in my sleep. But if I get sick, brother, don't you be praying for me to get, I, I know you got a lot of faith, but don't you be praying for me to get well. She says, I'm ready to go. I'm going to go and meet my, meet my maker. So uh, anyhow, we, we're going we're gonna to come back to some worship here in a little bit. But I just, uh, I'm, I'm so excited that we're back together again. And, and I'm, go ahead, go ahead. And I wonder, I wonder if anybody has a, a, a testimony that is in your soul that you just were driving the church this morning saying, boy, I hope Pastor Rich asked for testimonies because I just want to share this thing so bad. I mean, we could take the whole morning and just pass the microphone around and testify. But I'm talking about a testimony that, you, that really is going to glorify the Lord and that you just are chomping at the bit, as the saying goes, to share this morning. Is there anybody here this morning like that? After that, after that caveat that I put before, I guess no one wants to, no one wants to give testimony. So, so God is good. We can testify that the Lord is good. And he's gracious, and he's uh, and he he's never. Uh, Ken, you have the handheld. Let me have it up real quick. Thanks. Shelly wants to share. Okay. Good morning, family. Good morning. And um, so you know, it's been rough for all of us for the last few months with this, you know, being locked down thing. Um, but I want to testify to the goodness and the glory of God and his promises that he keeps because a few months ago before all of this began, when I go to the doctors in Pittsburgh, I um, usually stop at the Friends of Pittsburgh, uh, the animal facility up there. And so I did that on my way home and when I was walking through the dog kennels and things like that, um, I came up on this old pound dog and she just looked sad, like she'd been, you know, out there hunting for somebody forever, and then they just like cast her aside, you know, and I kept, she was on my heart. I went home and I told William, you know, that I had seen her and stuff, and I said, I keep feeling like we need to go and get her. And so um, she just stayed on my heart. Well, just about a week ago, you know, I, I was going crazy from all this, just being locked down, and all of a sudden I saw a girl walking down the street, and I stood up and I said, I think that, I, that looks exactly like the dog that I saw down there. And I said, that's what she looked like, right? And stuff, and she's walking by. And uh, William yelled out to her, hey, did you just rescue that dog? And she said, yes, I did, from the Animal Friends of Pittsburgh outside. I started crying, you guys, because 
in, out of any place in Pennsylvania that that dog could have ended up, God told me he had her. He's got us all. You know what I mean? And I mean, I was literally in tears. My son actually got to meet the girl the other day and talk to her and tell her. They came back by, they walked her out three times a day past my house, and I got to meet her the other day. Her name is Strudel. But I'm just talking about the promises of God and, and how real he is and how he'll reveal us himself to us if we can slow down and actually see the miracles that he puts before our eyes in simple situations. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. My sister's um, brother, my sister's um, son, he was in a bad wreck and everything, and um, he went to the hospital and everything, and the good Lord, we prayed for him and everything, and then, so they, they took him home, and now he's back home, he's a little, a little dizzy, he was through a lot of pain and everything, and uh, so... Thank God, the rich and everything, we pray for him and everything, and he's doing better and everything, so thank God for him and everything. And thank God. God. I got one. Dave, you might be <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah. I don't have one, right? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I guess this is my good side. Oh, good side. Okay, I'm done. So, uh, I had a former co worker. She since moved on when I worked in. She used to be a professor at CNU. Right? So, uh, she came to work with us for real world experience. You know? So, her belief in Jesus is about the same as my belief in Bigfoot. Okay? Um, and during all this stuff that's going on, especially the Rioting and stuff. You know, I posted something on Facebook that I got my Air Force buddies and it's about prayer, right? And she could she goes, she posts on there, prayer is nice, but you have that action. And I posted back, prayer is action. And she goes, give me an example. I've never seen an example anywhere where prayer has worked. Right? It's okay, I'll give you one. I talked about he's not here right now, so my old buddy Gaio over there. Right? Gaio, for those of you that don't know, had two previous kidney transplants. Well, was it three or two? Anyway, he had a bunch of kidney transplants that failed. He had bad kidney disease, he had bad kidneys, and one of the kidneys was from his father, even that failed, right? So, you know, the doctor basically said, Dave, you're going to have dialysis for the rest of your life, right? He came here to a healing service. We prayed for him on Sunday. On Wednesday, he was being prepped because they found a perfect match kidney for him. That wasn't waiting until, and it's been like, what, two or three years? Six or seven years. It's been a while. I mean, you've seen guy was healthy as a horse, right? So I said, coincidence that we prayed for him, and three days later, he shows up? I think not. So, and the response I got back from her was not the typical liberal venom that I was expecting. It was like, oh, well, you know, I'm happy for your friend, and I'm happy for your faith. So maybe your window was open there. I don't know. But bottom line, I just wanted to say that, you know, we have to always have that answer, right, for our faith. And uh, there's one there's an example for you. Yeah, I want to encourage everybody. I'm just going to share a short word today. I think it's very fitting. I'm very excited, and I've been brought. I don't know how many of you, but how many of you have been watching me on Facebook every day? Can I see your hands? Oh, wow, cool. Um, that has really been a pleasure. I've been spending about two hours every morning preparing my message and then teaching every day. And I feel like I've been on mission because when I go, when Kath and I were in, in uh, Bulgaria, I'm preaching a couple times a day. When we're in Honduras, I'm preaching three times a day. All I'm doing is in the word and preaching in the word and preaching in the word and preaching the whole time. When I'm in India, I'm preaching five to six times a day. First one's at nine o'clock, preach for an hour, eat a little something, preach for another hour, teach more than preach. And I mean, all day long. And then the night meeting's over 11 o'clock and all my pastor friends come hang around me. You want to go eat, you know, come and eat with us. We've got food over here. So, so now we're up to two o'clock in the morning and I'm teaching and talking about Jesus at two in the morning. 
then a 45 minute drive back to the hotel and then a couple hours of sleep and all over again, you know, so and I love it. I just, I just love it. And uh, so it's been fun to do this. First week I went stir crazy. You know, I'm a, I'm a pretty busy, I'm a physical guy, busy, you know, put long day, long hours in. It's what I like to do uh, for the kingdom. And, I, and I'm a people person. So for like, for the whole week, man, I'm, I literally was going through like people withdrawal. You know, it's like, I need people, man. I need, you know, I'm, I, I need some living water. I need some rivers of living water that are flowing from my, my people that I love, you know. And I have some water in here I want to I flow out. So I think it's important, saints, that, you know, there's still, I don't know if you're, if you're sensed this or not, but one of, the thing, one of the things through the whole uh, coronavirus thing that I experienced, experience, and, and I've talked about this along the way here through Facebook messages on uh, Sunday as well, during, as well as during the week, is the unbelievable amount of fear that people experience. You know, there's a spirit of fear that has is, that is accompanied this virus, which is probably is more spiritually deadly, I think, than this physical deadliness of the virus. You know, I mean, obviously people have died from the virus. It can take your physical life, but the level of fear is just, is just abnormal. It's not a normal fear that is there. And you, have to, you guys have to remember that no matter how dark it is, no matter how ugly things get in the realm of the spirit, light always wins over darkness. Light always wins over darkness. And the scripture calls us light bearers. Jesus said, when you, you, know, you are the light of the world. Jesus said, we are the light of the world. That's a pretty remarkable statement. You know, we think about you know, everything following the big guy on Jesus, you know, but no, he's given us his light. He's given us his Holy Spirit at conversion. And we carry the light. We carry that hope. The scripture says, Dave mentioned in his testimony, we need to always be ready to give an answer for the hope that is within us. You know, that's what it means to be, to be salt and light. So when, whenever we are enjoying life in spite of the uh, inconveniences of having to wear masks in the stores and social distancing and all those other kinds of things, we're still in love with Jesus. We're, we're still believing God for good things. We're still filled with hope. The biblical definition for hope is, is anticipation and expectation to receive something that is good from God. You know, there's an expectation. No matter what the situation and circumstances are, I'm expecting to receive good from God. There's a little boy who kept on asking his father uh, for a pony. He says, Daddy, I want a pony. I want a pony. pony. And he, he had cowboy guns and a cowboy hat and cowboy boots. And he just wanted to be, he just was, wanted to be a cowboy to watch, watch nothing but the cowboy channel and movies. And his dad said, hey, you know, we just, we got, only got a couple acres of land here. There's not enough for a pony. You know, we can't have a pony. So, so the father uh, knew a guy who was a farmer, had a horse farm, and he had a garden in the back that he was uh, preparing to, to, uh, to uh, plant stuff in. So he had his farmer friend come over with his dump truck and dump a load of, of poop on the, on the garden, you know, manure on the garden. So the dad comes home from work, and he, and he pulls up the drive when he sees, this, he sees a manure flying in the air. He thinks, what the heck's going on? Comes around the side of the house, and there's his little son, you know, maybe six, seven years old, with his little plastic shovel from the beach, and he's going at it, man. He's digging through that manure, and manure's flying everywhere. And, you know, not, not being spread in the garden. It's going up on the roof. It's going all over the place, you know. And dad said, his dad says to him, you know, Junior, what are you doing? What are you doing? He says, Dad, with that big pile of poop, there's got to be a pony in there somewhere. <laughs> you know? So no matter what the situation and circumstance we find ourselves in, you know, no, no matter how much you know what, you know, if you need deep and you know what, you know, I'm looking for something good to come out of that. I'm looking, I'm looking you know, tomatoes grow really good and you, and you know what, that deep, you know. So we need to be people of hope and be able to continue to shed light into people's lives and be intentional, you know. I've said this from the, I think one of the first messages that I preached that we had to preach on, uh, online without being together is that this is, could be one of the greatest opportunities that, are, that, that have afforded us, you know. And who knows what the future is going to hold. This isn't, you know, things like seem like it's slowly getting back to normal. But who knows what's going to happen in the fall? They're saying the virus is going to come back. Some say it is, some say it isn't. Whatever is going to happen. And this might not even be the last time in your lifetime that we have to face something like this. So I think we need to be ready. We need to be positioned. We need to be prepared spiritually by keeping ourselves filled with the love of God, keeping ourselves filled with faith so that we're able to be salt and we're able to be light. Salt whets your appetite. Salt whets your appetite. So the way that we live our lives should be whetting the appetite of other people for Jesus. Uh, Paul says that we are living letters known and read of all men. So the way we live our lives, the way we conduct our lives, the way that we handle the crises that, are, that we face each day, 
COVID-19 just being one of many crises we all face, the way we face those things, people are reading our lives and seeing, and seeing that. We gotta make sure that we are keeping ourselves filled with the river of living water. Speaking of living water, uh, let's pray, and then I'm gonna get into the word. Father God, we just thank you, Jesus. Let's stand, can we do that? Let's stand. Let's raise our hands all the way up high as a sign of worship, as a sign of surrender. I forgot how to do church. I forgot how to do this, you know. <laughs> Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for the great grace that you've shown us. Lord, I thank you that we are your sons and your daughters. We are children of light. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Jesus, I thank you that today as we stand in our house of worship together, as a body joined together, Father, I thank you for the river of life that flows from each of us. And God, I just pray, Lord God, I pray that that river is within us and would flow out from us and would bless our brothers and sisters. And we would receive an exchange of spiritual living water one to another, refreshing our spirits and building us up on our most holy faith. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. This is the day of Pentecost, celebrated worldwide, uh, the outpouring of your, of your presence and your power in the baptism. And Lord, I just pray that as I unpack the word a little bit this morning, God, that you would just stir our hearts, that you would uh, cause us to desire more of you. We might come to a place of, of fullness and overflowing of your power and of your presence in our lives. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As you're being seated, turn to somebody and say, I want more of the Holy Spirit presence in my life. I want more of Holy Spirit presence in my life. You know, these interruptions in life are good. I, I, I appreciate interruptions in life because any kind of interruption, because we become, we're such creatures of habit. We just kind of, you know, I don't know about you guys, but we can kind of just like wake up and just, it's another day, another day going to work, another day cutting the grass, another day whatever, and we just kind of grind it out. And we're kind of like robotic machines that just grind out the, uh... How you like interruptions? Hey, <laughs> <I'm interrupting. laughs> What's up? Everything's not down. Everything's not down? At least, I don't know why. All right. <laughs> I got you. Cool. When you have those kinds of interruptions, when something happens, uh, just like it just happened here, it, it makes you have to, I had to do, you know what I had to do? What did I have to just do here? Where was I? I have to rethink this thing. I have to rethink what Dave just came down here. Un, that was unscripted, by the way. Unscripted, he comes down here, interrupts me. Throws me off, throws me off, thrown for a loop. How many of you were thrown for a loop when you said you got a shelter within, when the boss says don't come in, come get a laptop, you have to work from home or go sign up for unemployment or whatever. I mean, we're thrown for a loop, you know? You know, we don't even know what's gonna happen. I thought it was gonna be two weeks, no big deal, two weeks. We're only supposed to, you know, close from March 15th, whatever it was, to the end of March, you know, we're cool. And then it's like, it's extended, and it's extended again, you know? And Ken's hair gets longer and keeps on growing longer and longer and bushes out of his hat, you know. And uh, the, uh, he, the, he was, uh, the, the, it was an ID check and they checked his ID and he said, rest this guy, this is an imposter, this isn't him on the picture, you know, at the hair all sticking out there. The, uh, so, you know, you have, to, you have to rethink. When Dave came down, I had to rethink what I was doing. So, you know, when this happened and the longer this was happening, I just kept on thinking, to myself, I don't wanna just go back to the way things were. I don't wanna just go back and pick up where we left off. I wanna go back with more vibrancy in God. I wanna go back with more clarity about my, my purpose on earth. Uh, I wanna come back with a greater revelation of my identity in Jesus. I wanna come, come back with, with a stick to of faith. I wanna come back living my, with my thoughts, my, 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 my thoughts, my words, in my actions glorifying Jesus more. I want to come back to a more centric, Jesus-centric life. I want to come back, our church to come back to a more Jesus-centered church. As we were approaching closer to the time of, of, uh, of the, uh, 
Uh, Ken and Linda were in Florida when, this, when the, uh, we had a shelter in place. So they suffered a lot for Jesus in 80 degree weather down there while we were still up there <laughs> trying to figure out whether winter was over or spring was coming or what the heck was happening up here with our weather, you know. So when he finally got, came back and we got to actually be in, pre, uh, in, the, in each other's presence of a socially acceptable distance, you know, I'm teasing. And, we're, you know, and we were, and we were began to co have co conversation about what it would look like, look like when we came back to church. You know, I just said, I don't want us to just come back. What we had is, I mean, church before, you know, January, February, before this thing happened, I mean, I think we have a great church. I think there's a lot of love in this place. I think we've got great worship. I think we have, you know, uh, just, uh, this is a wonderful place to be, family, you know. Consider each, each of you as part of my family. And uh, so, it, so I'm not complaining in any way about what we had, but I just thought, the Holy Spirit just stirred me. There's more. There's more. We can, we, can, we can have a greater spiritual experience as we come together for all of our small group gatherings, for our corporate worship celebrations, and all these kinds of things. There's more. So we begin to talk. Ken and I began to talk. Kathy and I and Ken and Mackenzie began to talk. And, you know, and we kind of bowled the thing down to this. You, know, you can have you know, fancy lights. You can have fancy sound systems. You can have fancy carpet, comfortable pews air conditioning, all those things, and we're grateful for all those, all those creature comforts. You can have all that kind of stuff, you know. You can come up with some wild video, you know, or wow, W-O-W, -W, you know, wild videos and all those kinds of things, you know. You can come up with all those kind of things. You can even come up with teaching that's 10 times better than mine. It's out there, because I know, because I listen to some of it. You know, you can come up with all those things. You know, we could, I could polish my message up and really, and I could go get some training on how to be a public speaker and more effectively communicate and do all those kinds of things. But if you don't have the power and the presence of Holy Spirit saints, what do you got? What do you got? You got nothing. You got nothing. You, you've, got, you've got a presentation. You know, there's, and I'm not gonna, I don't, you know, I bless every church, the name's the name of Jesus, I bless it. I bless every church, every work, every message that is Jesus-centered, is out to win souls, I bless it. I bless it. But there's, you know, there's, there's, you can go into a church and if the Holy Spirit wasn't here, if the Holy Spirit wasn't in the church, no one would know the difference because it's this wonderful presentation. You know, the focus is on the presentation of it. Even if the presentation is good, if there's no, if there's no Holy Spirit presence, what have you got? You've got a, an outward show of godliness that, that has no power, you know? The, the gospel is the power of God. Paul said in, in Romans 1, 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to those that believe. Power of God. May 17th, 1971. No, April 17th. I can never get it right. I even put it in my phone. April 13th. April 13th, 1971. Ken McGaffick's life encountered the power of God and he was miraculously changed. He, he, he was transformed. He went from being a hippie to, to being a, a Jesus freak. Yeah, that was a good thing back in the day. If, you're, if you got saved in the 70s, you know what Jesus freaks were about. He became a Jesus freak. Shortly thereafter, he realized he saw the Holy Spirit at work and he said, I want that. Didn't, didn't have two scriptures to, bend, uh, to blend together. He tells the story marvelously. Uh, O'Neill. I can't remember his first name. Donnie, Donnie O'Neill. Ken comes into a Bible study and Donnie's there. And he says, I want, Ken says, I want the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want the power of God. Donnie was, had never been exercised in that before. He had never done that before. It wasn't something that, 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 that he pursued or, or the Holy Spirit prompted him to do. And, and so he led him. And because he was so hungry for the power of God, he received the power of God. And that power of God has been fueling him and empowering him to be a holy man of God for almost 50, oh, it's 50 years this year. No, next year is 50 years. 50 years next year. June 21st, 1978, I encountered the power of God. My, my eyes were open. My heart was open. A veil of unbelief that Satan had placed over my, over my eyes, a darkness that had gripped my mind and my heart and my spirit was broken by the power of God because someone, was, what, someone believed in the power of God and spoke the, power, spoke the word to me and the Holy Spirit accompanied the word, sharing, sharing his faith with me for three days until it finally came to the point where, where, I, was, where I was able to set, surrender myself to the Lord Jesus Christ. But sometime in, in August, it came, that was in June, sometime in August I was baptized. Shortly after that, 
I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit after pursuing it for quite some time. Received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and received that power. And there's been power after power after power after power encounter, saints. Jesus told his disciples, how important is it that you have anointing in your life? How important is the power and presence of the Holy Spirit? If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't have salvation. If you don't have Holy Spirit, you don't have life. If, you don't, if you're not in, in union with Holy Spirit, drawing it on, upon his life essence and, 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 and actually making this a reality, it's in him that we live and we move. And we have our very existence. <clears throat> it's in the power and the presence of Holy Spirit in our lives. G Holy, Holy Spirit comes to, to impart to us everything that Jesus would have us to impart. There's more. Jesus is hanging out with a bunch of people, and there's Pharisees that are there. He turned to the religious leaders who had all the form perfectly. They had perfect form. They had no power. They were more concerned with the presentation and more concerned with their public appearance and, and what people thought about them. They were very showy. They were more concerned with that than they, and having, having control over the people than they were about, uh, about other things. They neglected love and mercy, and justice, these kinds of things they neglected. So Jesus called them evil. He looked at him and said, you men who are evil, if your son asked you for bread, he asked you for meat or asked you for food, would you give him a serpent? And they said, no, we'd give him the kosherest hot dogs we could find them, you know, kosher hot dogs, kosher chicken nuggets we'd give our kids, right? That's what we give kids. And then, uh, that's not what he said, but you know what I mean. And then he said, if he wanted bread, would you give him a stone? And he said, no, we'd give him the finest, finest bread we could get, you know, at the, at the bakery. And uh, so he said, how much more, how much more, how much more does your heavenly father want to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask, to those that ask, to those that ask? Scripture says we have not because we ask not. We have not because we ask not. I've seen people praying for things that are temporal. They're temporal. Bible says God already knows what we need, not to worry about what we need. He's, or if you've lost your job as a result of this thing, I would be excited for you. I am excited for you because there's another door of opportunity that's going to be open. How many of you can, have, how many of you can say something bad happened to you? Let me ask this, just this simple question. How many of you in this room lost your job, had a falling out with your employer, lost your job, your company terminated, whatever, and you lost your job, and initially then you thought, oh, my God, how am I going to provide for my family? They're going to repossess my car, repossess my house. What am I going to do? That initial thing just impacts you. But then, but God, saints, everybody say it. But God shows up. And a greater, when he closes one door, another door of opportunity opens. And, you, and you're so glad. You can say, maybe some period of time later, you can look back and say, I am so glad I lost my job. I'm so glad that company closed because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that bad thing that happened back then. How many of you can, how many of you can show me your, your hand and testify to that? Look at that. Look at that, a third of the people in this room have, ha have had that, you know? Is God any different today than he was back then when he did that for you? He, say this, Lord, repeat me, Lord, you did it for them, you can do it for me. I am with expectation, awaiting the open door of opportunity from you. Amen, amen, praise God. How many of you were in a relationship with someone and you thought it was going to end in a, in a in matrimony and it fell apart, the relationship dissolved, whatever the situation was. It was heartbroken. You were heartbroken at the time. But later to find out, you're so glad that didn't happen because you wouldn't have the person you're with now had you married that person then. Anybody have an experience like that? Get some hands up there too. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, I watched Lauren and Miguel are looking at each other more. It's like looking like yeah, they're engaged to be married in August, you know? So it's like, yeah. God is good, saints. God is good. Say this. He did it before. He's done it before. He can do it again. Turn to somebody and say, there's more. Turn to someone and say, what you got is good, but there's more. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1.
these are the very last things that Jesus said to his disciples. In Matthew 28 and in John 16, Jesus gives the, is preparing his disciples for the rest of their life's mission and purpose and ministry. He's preparing them. So he, is, he, is, uh, he says to them, is that me? He says to them uh, in Mark chapter 16, he said, he said, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, uh, you shall receive power to be witness. I'm sorry, this is an Acts. But he said, they that believe shall lay hands upon the sick. They shall cast out demons. They shall take up, which means take up and take away serpents. They shall lay hands upon the sick and they'll recover. So Jesus gives the great commission to the disciples. He tells them, don't do anything until you get the Holy Ghost, is what he says to them. Don't get anything until you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. These guys are already born again. They already have the Holy Spirit living inside of them. They're already regenerated. Now they need to receive power. The Holy Spirit enters us at the moment of conversion for life transformation. But he, but he, but he comes upon us for, for us to be able to... When you, when you get converted, the Holy Spirit comes into your life. His duty is to lead you, guide you, teach you, and to transform your soul into the likeness, the simil similitude of Jesus, so that we are a reflection of who Jesus is. So the initial conversion is for moral and spiritual transformation and, 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 and uh, kingdom uh, culture and character in your life. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's so that you can, you can do the ministry that Jesus did. So conversion causes you to have the heart that Jesus has towards everybody, okay? But the baptism of the Holy Spirit and power gives you the ability to do the ministry that Jesus did. He told his disciples that greater works than these you're going to do. These works that you see me do, and greater works than these you're going to see me do. You know, um, this, you know if you've been following me on, on Facebook during the week, uh, you know, week before Easter we started doing the, doing the, the week uh, of Jesus' last week of Jesus' life. Good Friday, we did the Good Friday message. Then, then we did post-resurrection conversations, all the conversations and ministry that Jesus had with his disciples from for the 40 days that he was alive after his resurrection, before he ascended into heaven, which we're gonna read here in just a second. Uh, during that period of time, he was preparing them for their for ministry. He was preparing them for their purpose. And there's no indication that they did anything until, during that preparation period until after they received the Holy Spirit and everything changed. You know, so, so you can be content in your Christian experience of being converted. And there's nothing wrong with that saying, I'm so glad my name's in the book of life. I know that I was a sinner, but now I'm saved. I know that Jesus loves me. I know that, you know, I know that now when I pray, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I awake, I pray the sword, Lord my soul to take. Now I know that factually. It's not just something, a little prayer, a kid's prayer I used to pray. But now I know that factually. I, I don't, I'm not afraid of death. Like Sister Millie laying on the steps, I'm going home with Jesus, you know, and disappointed that she didn't die. You know, so we recognize that death is not, the, the power of sin and death has been broken over us as a result of our conversion. It's a great place to be. And if you're not at that place, then press in. The Bible says if you draw close to God, he'll draw close to you. Jesus said, if you come to me, I will never turn you away. I will never, there's nothing that you can do that can separate you from God's love. So you need to come to that place of that, of that reality of that relationship with him. But then there's so much more, saints. You can be content with that. Or you can come to the place where you realize that there's more and that you want more. It's his, it's his Father's good pleasure to give the Holy Spirit to those that ask. Is he talking about giving the Holy Spirit for conversion here? No, he's giving, talking about giving the Holy Spirit for, for, uh, for ministry purposes. You give Holy Spirit power and presence. You know, you have the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's not like when you, if you sin, the Holy Spirit leaves and you're good and the Holy Spirit comes back. The moment you become born again, the Holy Spirit comes in and joins himself to your spirit you become the adopted son and daughter of God. You become the joint heir of Christ. You become born of his spirit. You become my brother or my sister in Christ. You, know, you become part of the family of God. And, and that happens. The work that he's doing in your life, he is faithful to do it to the end. We need to remain faithful and steadfast uh, in, in our part, do our part, and the Holy Spirit's going to do his part. But there's more. If you have a sin in your life right now you're struggling with, quit struggling with it. Quit struggling with it in your, in your soulish power. Quit trying, to, quit trying to wrestle the flesh with the flesh. You ever try to arm wrestle yourself? It's exhausting. Try to arm wrestle yourself sometime. If you try to arm wrestle yourself, 
Here, we're going to do a little demonstration. Okay. So you try to arm wrestle yourself. So I'm trying to push. This arm's trying to push this way, and this arm's trying to push this way, okay? So we're going to see which arm is going to win. Who do you think is going to win? Who's going to win? What's happening to my hands? I am pushing as hard as I can. I can feel my heart rate coming up. I hope my deodorant works today. And you can see this energy that's being expelled here. Are we accomplishing anything here? Is, it, is the hands moving in either direction? No. I'm getting exhausted. I'm, my temp I'm sweating. And guess what's going to happen? Nothing. Nothing. You can't fight the flesh with the flesh. You can't fight, this, you can't fight sin with human ability. You can't fight a brokenness of soul with your soul. You can't heal a brokenness of soul with your soul. You need a supernatural power to be able to do that. You need supernatural power to do that. Whatever situation and circumstance you find yourself struggling with in the area of the, of the flesh, of the natural man, the carnal man, you need, <sighs> 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 breath, you need some oxygen. Um, whatever you find yourself at doing that, Saints, you need to just give up. You need to come to the place and say, God, there's this thing that I'm doing that displeases you, that displeases me, that displeases other individuals. It is contrary to your kingdom. I don't like it, but I'm done because I can't do anything about this. I've tried and I've tried, and all I've done is exhausted myself trying to wrestle the flesh with the flesh. I need your power, Lord. I need your power. Paul said, it's in our weaknesses that what? Christ's strength is made evident, made real, comes to the surface, comes to the rescue. You know? so, so there needs to be that. You can be out there swimming, and a lifeguard gets his little microphone and says, hey, are you okay out there? Yeah, you say, yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'll make it, I'll make it, I'll make it. Meanwhile, you're, you're swimming like this. All right, you're going backwards, the current's carrying you out. You know, it isn't until you do what? What do you have to do? Help, help, come, save me, save me, help. Then what comes in? All the guys with the red bikinis, uh, speedos on, and the girls with the red, red bras and uh, bikinis on, they come running, right? Come running, dive in there with their little red thing behind them tied to their foot, right? It's amazing how, how good a human memory is, you know? How, 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 what, what, saw that as a kid, you know? I used to watch it because I like to watch, the, watch the, how powerful swimming they were. That's why I watched Baywatch back in the day, you know? And uh, so off they come, come to, the, to the rescue. Some of the young people are like, what? what? And... Uh, they come to the rescue because why? Because you yell. All those that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That word saved is sozo. Healed, saved, delivered, made whole. All those things. It's all that Jesus provided on the cross for us. Not just so we can go to heaven and be with him for eternity, but so that heaven could enter us now, guys. So that we could be heaven on earth. So that when we walk as representatives of Jesus, everywhere we go, we can have his power to break sin in our lives. We can have his power to break fear in our lives. Perfect love casts out fear. We can have power to be able to open our mouths and declare who Jesus is. We'll be able to have power to speak to the demonic that is coming against our, our lives and our family. Be able to speak to that demonic command to cease and desist. We have authority, saints. I marched around this place last night, all over the place, up and down the aisles. I just had the lights on in the back there on so I could, find, I could walk around not falling over a pew somewhere. And I took control of every demonic activity that would come against you. Every person that belongs to Wawa Chapel, I commanded them to cease and desist and to go to the feet of Jesus. And I, I walked with a, a, the authority and, and anointing. And that authority and anointing is available for every single one of us. Every single one of us. There's power. There's more than what we've got, saints. So if you have a need of, to overcome such a situation in your life, then you just got to ask for power. You got to be that person who yells help knowing that you're going to drown and, you know, and quit trying to swim like this, trying to go forward and you're going backwards. Quit trying to fight the flesh with the flesh, you know, quit trying to, uh, to, you know, to please God by your performance. You need to please God by your faith. You need to please God by your dependency upon him. The Apostle Paul said, I boast in my weaknesses and my infirmities and my difficulties 
so that the power of God may be evident within my life. So that's, that's one of the things that is necessary for us to come, to, come into power. So, um, now how many of you want to be an effective minister? How many of you want to be an effective testament? You need power. You need power for that, and he'll give it to you. I mean, if, that's, if your heart and motivation is to see souls won, people's lives touched, hurting, loved on, say, Lord, here I am, send me. He'll somehow supernaturally, just as Isaiah had a hot coal put in his mouth so he could proclaim God's word, the Holy Spirit will put it. Jesus, Jesus is coming, or John the Baptist is preparing people for Jesus' coming to the earth. And he says, the one who's coming, Jesus, he will baptize with Holy Spirit and with fire. That fire purges us of our sin. The fire is fuel. Fire was the, you know, fire was the nuclear reactor of the day. That was the greatest source they had of heat and light and power and, and whatever it was, was fire. You know? So, so Jesus, is, Jesus, is gonna give us, Jesus wants to give us power to be able to be able ministers. The scripture says every one of us are able ministers. How many of you would like to flow in spiritual gifts? Words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophecy, tongues and interpretation. It's available. It's available. The Bible says 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the gifts of the Spirit are these things, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, gifts of miracles, healing, gifts of faith, tongues and interpretation. We have all these things that are available. How much more will your Heavenly Father give to you, the Holy Spirit, to those that ask, saints? So we're going to call the worship team back up here again. That's the end of my message. It's only 1130. And uh, now we're going to, we're going to do, some, do some more worship. I encourage you guys to get sweaty for Jesus. Check, test your deodorant, and um, uh, let's, let's worship him. And then at some point here, we're gonna uh, we're gonna begin to ask. Let's just take some time. Begin to ask Holy Spirit for power. Ask Holy Spirit for power to overcome uh, sickness and disease, and overcome fears, overcome whatever situations is that, is that we need. Anybody anybody ready for some fresh power? Anybody ready for a fresh touch from God? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's all stand. Put your hands on your heart, please. Father God, we just give our hearts to you. Lord, our hearts are filled with gratitude for the marvelous grace that's been shown to each of us, Lord. We, we, Lord, our hearts are filled with gratitude that we can come together and, and experience your, your power and your presence as we, where two or more are gathered together. We thank you, Jesus, that you inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, we thank you for your habitation through corporate worship. And Lord, as we worship together this morning again, God, I pray the Holy Spirit that you would just begin to just supernaturally download power. Whatever is in the heart, whatever it is in your heart that you want. Saints, I want you to just whisper. I want, can we have some background music so nobody can hear? Just the piano would be great. Just a little bit of piano. I want you to pray a little prayer while the piano is playing so the neighbors can't hear you. I want you to just ask Jesus what kind of, what do you want? What power do you want this morning? What, do you need power over sin? Do you need power for boldness? Do you want to see gifts of the Spirit flow through you? What do you want? What do you want from Holy Spirit this morning? Tell him right now. Just whisper up. Just enough so you can hear. Holy Spirit, I want this. Holy Spirit, pour on me this morning fresh. Give me a fresh anointing for this. Holy Spirit, fill me to overflowing. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Just verbalize your, verbalize your, your request right now. Verbalize that request right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just stand here with our hearts, on our hands on our hearts, God. Lord, I pray that you'd fill every heart today. Lord, as we worship you and you inhabit the praises, Holy Spirit, just as your, your sovereign act of Holy Spirit baptism was on the day of Pentecost and, and tongues of fire rested upon each one, I pray for Holy Spirit fresh baptism for every person that desires to hear this morning, Lord. Lord God, that not one person will leave this place today without being satisfied in their soul and their spirit because they've encountered you, Lord. Father, I pray that for the last couple of months that we've missed of being together in the, in the, in the, in the moments by moments deposits you've made into our lives, God, I pray that you would just take a bucket full of that and deposit it upon each person, Lord Jesus. Fill us up to overflowing, Lord God. Light a fresh fire and passion and love for you, Jesus, in each of our hearts, Lord. God, put a fresh desire within our hearts to, to, to think holy, to speak holy, and to live holy, to honor you and to glorify you. 
Thank you, Jesus. God, I pray that you, I pray that even as we are ministering to you, that your your Holy Spirit giftings would be poured out and you would severally as you will, Holy Spirit, you would move across this congregation and that we might see uh, spiritual gifts alive and, and, and active on a daily basis, not just in the not in our corporate gatherings, but in a daily basis in the workplace, in the marketplace, in the home front. We would prophesy, we would have words of wisdom and words of understanding and spiritual discernments, Lord. Pour out your spiritual gifts, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, I'm not satisfied with church status quo as we had it before, Lord. Shake us up, Lord Jesus. Use this as an opportunity for us to refocus and rethink. Lord we, Jesus, we just ask that you'd come in a powerful way. Powerful way. Everybody say this with me. Lord Jesus, your kingdom come and you will be done right here today in my life. Holy Spirit, fill me, cleanse me, heal me, deliver me. Holy Spirit, I declare my weakness, my inabilities, my shortcomings to you today. I ask that you would cleanse me and fill me afresh with Holy Spirit power and presence. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
So we're gonna sing this song. We're gonna we're gonna do a lot of worship. And I encourage you today, first of all, if you're in a place where you realize that coming out of this, your relationship with the Lord is not at its best, it's okay. It's so easy. His his love, his forgiveness, it's so easy. It's so free. So we're just gonna enter in. Thank you. 
Bye. 
Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. Magnify you, Jesus. Come on, let's raise our hands up. Let's just lift our voices up to him a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Be the center of our lives, Lord Jesus. Jesus, may this church be a, a Jesus-centric church. Holy Spirit, may you have free reign in this place. To live and move and have your being in us and through us. Holy Spirit, come and fill us afresh this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going to be fresh fire this morning, fresh power from the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to pray and ask God to fill you fresh right where you're at. Fill you fresh with His Holy Spirit power to give you what you need, whatever it is you need. You know what you need. We need more. We need more power and presence of the Holy Spirit in general. But there's something specific that you need. I want to. Is there a plan? I just want you to verbalize. I say, Lord, I need power to witness. Lord, I need power to overcome a sin. Lord, I need power to overcome critical judgmentalism, unforgiveness, whatever the situation is. You need power from. It's His good pleasure to give you the power. Ask, and he'll give you the Holy Spirit. He'll give you Holy Spirit power and presence in your life. So just go ahead right now. Verbalize it. I'm just going to ask God to fill whatever it is that you're requesting right now. Make a request to him. Lift up your voice. Not Don't lift your voice up. Just whisper up. Whisper up a prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we just come before you in the magnificent name of Jesus, Lord. Lord God, we declare our dependency upon you. Lord God, we, just, we declare our need for fresh power and fresh filling. Lord God, you promise in your word that there will be times of refreshing when the Holy Spirit comes. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just come. Holy Spirit, come. You are welcomed here. Fill each person. Fulfill those requests, those hearts' desires for your power and your presence in their life. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fresh fire in Jesus' name. Fresh fire in Jesus' name. Fire and power and presence of Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill us afresh. Fill us to overflowing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, bring us power to overcome sin. Holy Spirit, fresh power to overcome fear holy spirit fresh power to overcome every obstacle in every situation that we're faced holy spirit power to overcome depression and anxiety heaviness of spirit holy spirit come and bring fresh power upon all of us that we would be that we would be salt and we would be light in our marketplace holy spirit give us fresh love fresh desire to see people loved into the kingdom Lord God, I pray for a Holy Spirit download of love right now upon each one of us. Heavenly Father, pour out your love into our hearts. So we might have a heart filled with your love that so we can pour it out to others. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill us with fresh fire, fire right now, I pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, saints, let's thank him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, saints, the devil resists us all the time. Scripture says that the kingdom of God suffers. The King James says the kingdom of God is suffering violence, and the violent must take it by force. The, in the original language, it says this. The kingdom of God is being pressed upon. And those who are in the kingdom must press against the press. I've done that illustration with Joe here a few times where we 
where he's pushing on me and I'm pushing on him, showing that's exactly what it means. The devil's trying to push you backwards, and you need some Holy Ghost power to push you forward. Okay? The victorious thing is, saints, is that the Holy Ghost always wins. He's the champion. He has a he has a hundred percent success rate. You know, he doesn't lose. Now, the devil has nothing over him. So I want to encourage you to press against the press this morning. As I was praying last night, I knew there was going to be demonic resistance for us. The, uh, to, you know, I've experienced multiple times in my in my life demonic activity that was hindering me, and then only because I was about to receive a blessing. I was about to have a breakthrough. So don't give up. You know, you got to press against the press. Kathy was uh, felt impressed that. The Lord was saying that he wants to use every person in this room in some way that he hasn't used you before. And, you know, to increase his power and his presence in your life, to make you effective ministers, that you're going to have a testimony as a result of that. The testimonies are going to come from that. You know, and you, know, you got to take, you know, with Peter, he took a chance. Right. Saw Jesus walking on the water. And he said, Jesus, if that's you, bid me to come. Ask me to come. Jesus says, come on, Peter. Jesus is saying to you, come on. Come on, let's go. Let's step out on the boat. Let's step out in faith. Come on, let's go. We're, we've got things to do. There's people, you know, people that need to reach for your salt, your light. Come on, let's go. You need a little shaking. Get that salt out of the shaker, right? You know, uh, you need to turn some valves so that living water begins to flow. You need to press against the press things. So look for opportunities. Paul said, pray for me that a door of opportunity would be open to me, that I would share the gospel as I should. Saints, live your life missionally. Leave this place today expecting an open door of opportunity to share the Jesus in some way. Expecting some way where you can partner with Holy Spirit power and presence and be salt, be salt, and be light, and be love, and be life to someone who, who needs it. So I'm telling you what, this world's messed up. This world's messed up. You watch the news, it's messed up. My, my heart, there's riots all over the place because of, the, of social injustice and because of, because of just kingdom of darkness coming against the coming against the, the kingdom of light so we need to remember the light always wins out over darkness say that with me light always wins over darkness yes we fight from a place of victory we don't fight for victory we already have victory we fight from a place of victory we got to hold hold our ground so jesus said i'm coming i'm coming for those jesus said occupy until i come occupy that's a military term occupy you hold the ground that you have as you're looking for opportunities to move forward and advance God's kingdom in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just pray a blessing upon every family that's here. I pray a blessing on every family that's watching on in Facebook. We love you. We miss you. We look forward to seeing you uh, when you're ready to come back or when you can come back. Uh, just what, just know family of God that, that Wildwood Chapel loves you. It's great to be together. And we're starting to have some of the pieces fit together. But there are still some pieces that are missing. We're not a complete puzzle until we all come together and fully frame together, supplying our parts. We might be a body filled with the love of Jesus and the life of Jesus flowing through us. One more time, saints, raise your hands. Father, we just thank you. We ask for your blessing upon us as we go. We thank you for the, uh, for the privilege of knowing you. We thank you for the joy of serving you. We thank you for this time together in your presence. Lord, I pray for this for the power and presence of the Holy Spirit to just to increase, to be a spiritual sensitivity. I ask that every person would increase in the sensitivity to the voice of the Spirit, to the leading of the Spirit, to the, to the gentle nudging of the heart of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, that you might use us. Here we are. Say, say, say this with me. Lord God, here I am. Send me. Jesus, here I am. Use me. Holy Spirit, here I am, empower me for the glory of Jesus and the advancement of his kingdom and for the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Love you guys. Love one another. See you next week.